Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 17 Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in an house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. And it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me an house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in an house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent, and from one tabernacle to another. Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have ye not built me an house of cedars? Now therefore, Thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep cot, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning and since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. Moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house. And it shall come to pass, when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me an house and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house, and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. And David the king came and sat before the Lord, and said, Who am I? O Lord God, and what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Lord God. What can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou knowest thy servant. O Lord, for thy servant's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all this greatness, in making known all these great things. O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness, by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt? For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever, and thou, Lord, becamest their God. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as thou hast said. Let it even be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel. And let the house of David thy servant be established before thee. For thou, O my God, hast told thy servant that thou wilt build him an house. Therefore thy servant hath found in his heart to pray before thee. And now, Lord, thou art God, and hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Now therefore let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be before thee forever. For thou blessest, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. Chapter 12 Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, 
but he that hateth reproof is brutish. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be unto tribute. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Season greetings to you and your family, wherever you are, and a successful day and a restful night. Wherever you are at this time, may God's peace be in your heart, and even as we prepare for Christmas to spend time with friends and family, may we do so with grateful hearts for all that God has done for us in 2023. Today we are focusing on Proverbs chapter 12 and 1 Chronicles chapter 17. However, as we continue looking at the pictures of Jesus in the messages to the seven churches of Revelation, we are reading now Revelation chapter 2 and verse 12. The Bible says in Revelation 2.12, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sword, the sharp sword with two edges. Again, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Today's message is entitled, An Invisible Power, An Invisible Power. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to us now, for Christ's sake. Amen. According to J.K. Johnson, in a work entitled, Why Christians Sin, quote, Many years ago, in a Moscow theater, matinee idol Alexander Rotovsky was converted while playing the role of Jesus in a sacrilegious play entitled Christ in a Tuxedo. The actor was supposed to read two verses from the Sermon on the Mount, remove his gown, and cry out, Give me my tuxedo and top hat. But as he read the words, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, 
for they shall be comforted, he began to tremble. Instead of following the script, he kept reading from Matthew chapter 5, ignoring the coughs and calls and foot stamping of his fellow actors. Finally, recalling a verse he had learned in his childhood in a Russian Orthodox church, he cried, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Before the curtain could be lowered, Rotovsky had trusted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Friend of mine, such is the power of the Word of God, the Bible, the Word of the Living God. Uh, the next picture we have of Jesus in the messages to the seven churches in Revelation is that of one who possesses the sharp sword with two edges. The next picture we have of Jesus in the messages to the seven churches in Revelation is that of one who possesses the sharp sword with two edges. The question is, what is this sword and for what purpose is it used? Speaking of Jesus and the same sword, Revelation chapter 1 verse 16 says, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Speaking of Jesus, Revelation chapter 1 verse 16 says, Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Now, like the descriptive titles that introduced the messages to the churches of Ephesus and Smyrna, the image of a sword is drawn from the description of the glorified Christ in Revelation 1.16. Revelation 1.16 says that this two-edged sword goes out of Jesus' mouth. Now, since we have never seen a physical sword coming out of Christ's mouth when he was on earth, this seems to be symbolic language rather than a physical phenomenon of a literal sword coming out of Jesus' mouth. What is this symbolic sword in the mouth of Jesus? What is this symbolic sword in the mouth of Jesus? The Bible speaks of the Word of God as the sword of the Spirit. The Bible speaks of the Word of God as the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 declares, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Friend of mine, the two-edged sword is an emblem of the power of God's word. We say that again. The two-edged sword is an emblem of the power of God's word. Uh, the Apostle John means to represent the words of Jesus as if they were a sharp sword. His words cut and penetrate deep and it was easy to picture Jesus as having a sword proceeding from his mouth. That is, his words were as piercing and as sharp as a sword. As Jesus was about to reprove the church at Pergamos, there was a propriety in referring to this power of the Savior. Reproof cuts deep, and this is the idea represented here. You remember when Christ was on earth, many times he spoke and his words cut deep into the hearts of scribes and Pharisees and people and some of them were upset with him. Especially when you read passages like John chapter 6 and John chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 declares, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God, we read again, Hebrews 4.12 declares, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Oh yes, friend of mine, 
God's word is quick, meaning living. It takes a living and active force to create in human beings a new heart and to renew a right spirit within an individual, according to Psalm 51 verse 10. The word of God is living and imparts life. Thus it was in the work of creation and thus it is in the recreation of the image of God in the hearts of men and women. Psalm 33 verses 6 and 9. Jesus Christ, the incarnate word, likewise has life in himself, according to John chapter 1 verses 4 and 12 and John chapter 5 verse 26. Christ, the incarnate word, has life in himself. Oh yes, friend of mine, the word of God is the energizing force in conversion. The Christian is born again by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever, according to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. Oh yes, the Bible says God's word is quick and powerful. The Bible, the word of God is powerful. The Greek word for powerful is energies, meaning effective, active, powerful. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 6, our word energy is derived from energies, the Greek word for power. There is power in God's word, friend of mine, to transform sinners into saints. God's word is sharper than a sword. The nature of this sharpness is explained in the remainder of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. The word of God is living, powerful and sharp, fully able to accomplish his beneficent purposes for mankind. According to Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 and Isaiah chapter 55 verses 10 and 11. God's word is like a sword, but it cuts sharper than a sword. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. O oh, friend of mine, God's word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, like a sharp blade separating joint from marrow. The clear principles of the word of God discern between good and evil thoughts, right and wrong motives of the heart and of the mind. You see, friend of mine, in the Christian life, God has provided abundant means for successful warfare against the evil that is in the world. The Bible is the armory, oh yes, the Bible is the armory where we may equip for the struggle against the world, the flesh and the devil. Our loins must be girt about with truth, our breastplate must be righteousness, the shield of faith must be in our hand the helmet of salvation on our brow and with the sword of the spirit which is the word of god we are to cut our way through the obstructions and entanglements of sin oh yes friend of mine the first adam fell the second adam jesus held fast to god and his word under the most trying circumstances and his faith in his father's goodness, mercy, and love did not waver for one moment. It is written, was the weapon of Jesus. It is written, was his weapon of resistance. And it is the sword of the spirit which every human being is to use. It is this sword, friend of mine. It is this word that is like a two-edged sword that preachers are to proclaim. Oh yes, we must proclaim it through a sincere Christian life so that the Holy Spirit can use this sword to reach hearts. Preachers are not to divest the truth of its dignity and impressiveness by preliminaries that are more after the order of the world than after the order of heaven. People should understand that we cannot hold religious meetings merely to charm the senses with music and other things, but we are to preach the word in all its solemnity that it may come to everyone as a warning, arousing men and women from their death-like sleep of self-indulgence. It is the naked truth that like a sword, two-edged sword, cuts both ways. It is this that will arouse those who are dead in trespasses and the sins we say that again it is the naked truth of the word of god like a sharp two-edged sword 
that is to cut both ways, it is this word that will arouse those who are dead in trespasses and sins. Oh, friend of mine, oh, friend of mine, during this Christmas season, may God's word cut away that which is evil and sinful from our hearts and cause us to focus more intently on the Christ of the cradle, the Christ of the cross, and the Christ who is coming again in glory and power the second time. We say that again, O oh friend of mine, during this Christmas season, may God's word cut away that which is evil and sinful from our hearts and cause us to focus more intently on the Christ of the cradle, the Christ of the cross, and the Christ of the coming, the second coming with power and glory. O oh friend of mine, I present to you once again the Christ of Christmas. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for your word. Bless it to our hearts. Remember our prayer requests, Lord, and grant us, Lord, a successful day or a refreshing night wherever we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.